Hi everyone, welcome to March's I Thought It Was Just Me Instagram Live. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Kaylee and I'm so proud to be hosting um, this episode of our Instagram Live. So I'm gonna go ahead and let our guests in um, and so we can get started in just a few minutes. But thank you all so much for being here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. We have Eric Dorsa. Hey. Thank I know. I hijacked Eating Recovery Center's Instagram page and I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> Hi. Here is Bonnie Violet. Let me find her. I know I'm. I wore violet in honor of, or I guess you could say it's more lavender. But it's the most purple thing I could find in honor of Bonnie Violet. So <laughs> <clears throat> hopefully she, she approves. I, I am um, trying to add her, and it's not giving me the option. Weird. Let me see if I can find her. Yeah. Bonnie Violet. Where are you right now? <laughs> Join us! <laughs> I don't know. Maybe try canceling it, Bonnie, and then coming back in, maybe? Weird. What is it saying for you? We always have technical difficulties, people. Hang in there. It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's not giving me the option to add her. Like, it gave me the option to add you, and then it didn't give me the option to add I'm here. I know Bonnie Violet. Ah, there Where? you are. Okay. Okay. Confirm. Yes. Power to the people. Dear Instagram, let us go live before going live so we can add moderators. Right. Before we go live. I think that's a very reasonable request. I think she's coming. I know we're patiently, we're patient. Like that's the other thing too. Like, is it gonna? <laughs> I think like patiently is potentially an overstatement here. <laughs> I know. I'll... Ah! We're good, Chantel. How are you? Um, and welcome everyone. Tell us where you're tuning in from. Like I'm in New York City. I... Kaylee, you're in- North Idaho. <laughs> North Idaho. And Bonnie Violet, I know is, Somewhere in the world, I feel like she's like, where on earth is Carmen San Diego? Because she travels, making a difference in people's lives. So, what's it saying, Kaylee? So it says she is a moderator, but we can't see her. I'm gonna remove and then re-add. I don't know what's going on. I know. Thank you for coming on this journey with us through technology. Correct. Well, and while Michigan, oh, and Denver. Hello, Michigan, Denver. See, that's why I love this. Like, in some of my support groups, I'll have people from Israel and England and New Zealand, Palm. I want to go to Palm Springs so bad. Yes! Yes! Wait. <laughs> Bonnie, Eric, you volunteer! Hi, everyone. Hey. I was like, it's no, not going to let me time. on. I've never had any people on, and so I was like, nice. am I wrong? Like, can we not that that you know instagram has done wilder things so thank you so much for being here um will you both introduce yourselves um before we get started or as we get started bonnie violet do you want to go first or do you want me to go first <sighs> well sure i guess so hi everyone my name is bonnie violet um I'm trans, fat, and genderqueer. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm in Boise. Coming from I Idaho. I'm up top, and you're down low, but we're doing yes. a good work. All right. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, we have Fort Worth, Texas. I am a fellow Texan. What, what, what? Uh, seeking refuge in the great city of New York City. My name is Eric Dorsa. I am also trans, non-binary, femme. I use they, them pronouns out of drag, and she, her pronouns in drag um and i am very very excited to be here with two people like 
I know Kaylee and Bonnie Violet, you have not met each other yet, but just I have met Bonnie Violet so many times. Uh, and I'm so grateful for the work mm -hmm. that you do and have been such a huge inspiration in my own journey of transness and queerness. I just want to say that right off the top. And, um, and Kaylee, you've been such an amazing force in my life, both personally and professionally. So the fact that we all three get to have such an important conversation today just means the world to me, so. Thank you, Eric. And, and genuinely, thank you for letting me yes. be here and host this live. I think when we planned it a month ago, every single day that went by, it felt more and more important to have this conversation. Um, I wanna take a minute to just recognize that the heaviness that many of us are feeling as people who love um, individuals in the trans community and those of the trans communities, we just wanna take that moment. Um, and just really open this with, can you all tell us what is trans visibility and, and what does it mean to each of you personally? Oh, man. Mm. Sure. Do you want to go for first? All, first love. Trans visibility for okay. me is like just kind of this, like how it exists in this moment. Like one, like just thanking and honoring all of the trans people who choose authenticity over intimidation and honesty over fear and love and celebration over hatred and discrimination and dare to be themselves in this world and to be able to recognize and honor the courage that it takes to show up in that space so that people like me and other people like who we are can know that there's a place for them in this world and that their uniqueness mm -hmm. is what the world needs, that their voice is what the world needs, that their experience is what the world needs, and they are going to get the shit kicked out of them, which is like what I think is so powerful about us beginning to really find and embrace community. And like, I remember meeting you, Bonnie Violet, for the first time, it was over, you know, like, conversations about spirituality and God and and like those are two things that the dominant cultural and societal narrative says we are uh, we should not have access to or because we are queer and trans that we are somehow incorrect and therefore should be excommunicated from those spaces or that anything we say or do in terms of spirituality is not valid because of the identities that we hold and we dare to say otherwise and and it's been such a source of healing and so that is why I think a day like today is so important because human lives matter trans lives and experiences matter and contribute and mean something and I'm so sick and tired of the other side of this argument acting like we don't exist or we're incorrect or what we experience doesn't matter and we should just stop existing because we make people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I say to hell with that. I will proudly occupy space. And I think that's why on a day like mm -hmm. today in 2023, a day like today is so important because everybody can learn from our experiences. We're human beings. And it, I don't care if you're cisgender or straight or conservative, or liberal, or queer, like every human being's experience is valid to another human being. And I just encourage people to, mm -hmm. to step outside of your comfort zone, and to find the inspiration and the similarities and stories that don't look like your own. Yeah, very well said. And I think one of the things that's so important to me about Trans Day of Visibility is that there were so many days of my life that I didn't see trans people. Um, and the trans people I did see were just like one narrative or two narratives that were not me. You know, I started transitioning at the age of 40, you know, like it took me 40 years to see who I could be in my fullness, living my whole life, just not quite fitting and not really knowing how and why, like, because I, you know, like, am I, does God still love me? Um, am I gay? Am I a gay man because I'm flamboyant and I was assigned male at birth? Or am I, you know, and getting a 
you know, my femininity assaulted as a kid and you know, just all these sorts of things. Like I never saw who I could be in the community and the settings that I was in, whether it was church, whether it was school, whether it was home, whether it was on television, um, you know, like for many, many years, I never saw who I could be. And so I searched looking for me, you know, and I could, I, it was difficult to find my reflection. Um, and for me, you know, it's so important for me to see myself in someone else. Um, that's how I come to know myself more. And that's how I come to, to find myself usually in between, in between you and me, you know, is, is somewhere I can expand into. And so that's why trans visibility is so important. And, you know, I think it, it's interesting because I had a conversation with my aunt yesterday and she's like, why, why does there have to be a trans day of visibility, you know? And part of me is like, it's, I don't know that it's about non-trans people, you know? Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But I know as a trans person, it's so meaningful for me to see other trans people in the world and all the different ways that we we show up and we show out and right. we express ourselves. Well, yes, because I think just to kind of comment on that, like this idea that there's kind of a, a vacuum in which transness, transness can exist, that it's not this multi-layered cultural, historic, spiritual, and, you know, even political landscape is so disingenuous if you're not in if you're not incorporating mm -hmm. all of those lived experiences and all of those intersectionalities into what it means to be a human being but also a trans human being and that based on people's need to survive and navigate sometimes often impossible and horrible situations is going to determine how they identify with transness mm -hmm. and it's not meant to make sense to you as a non-trans person it's meant to be seen and validated and to quote Alok, who is one of my favorite trans non-binary activists, like my ability to feel safe as a human being should not be contingent on whether or not you personally understand my transness. It is that you recognize that I am a human being who deserves to stay alive and to be respected and to walk down the street as any other human being. And, and I think it's so important mm -hmm. not to judge the trans experience based on the circumstances that people have had to navigate in a world that does not love them, embrace them, or root for their success or even their survival and safety, which is why I think a day like trans visibility is so important. Yeah, and just to add, not to take it too long, but like, I think also like the fact of us being invisible as a community is almost just as violent or just as horrible as um, saying that we're abominations or that we're, you know, like whatever people wanna say about us, I think the fact that my community was so invisible to me for so long was maybe more violent or just as violent as somebody, you know, in my comments telling me about <laughs> I'll go to hell with you, Bonnie. <laughs> It'll be fun. I, Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie. <laughs> I know. I just don't believe in that. I think that <laughs> the you sharing that you did not come out as trans until 40 years old is such a testament to this conversation of like, you know, the the legislation coming down for trans children and the idea of what like how could they possibly mm -hmm. know when they're that young? And it's like the idea of introducing the idea of trans and non-binary existence is not um, some some seed that's being planted, it's a seed that's already in there. It's this identity that you didn't know you were allowed to have. And by allowing children to explore who they are, just like they explore who they want to be when they grow up, um, you know, what kind of color is their favorite color? It's all these things. It's as a child exploring who you are. And this is another element of it. And to, you know, snuff that and say that's not allowed then we do have 40 year olds finally finding themselves, finally giving themselves permission and the communities. <laughs> and that is powerful, but it's powerful. And what could your life have looked like, you know, had you been given the allowance mm -hmm. to explore who you were when you were young? And, and there's the, the, that question can never be answered. Um, and I wonder, you know, as mm -hmm. we're, kind of exploring what's going on um, with trans youth and the legislation coming down. How do, how do you all process through that? How do you manage, you know, this, this constant um, aggression towards your community? 
Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing that, that I can do is draw closer to my community, draw closer to my peeps, check in on my people, you know, and see how they're doing, um, you know, like in a lot of settings and a spiritual way of life, you know, when, when I'm struggling, I've been told to reach out and help somebody else. And so whenever I find myself in that spot, if I can, I try to just reach out because I feel like if I'm probably struggling, maybe someone else too, else is too. And I think the other aspect is just sometimes you just have to turn everything off and stop listening to the messages and stop you know, um, taking in all of that negative energy because no matter how powerful we are and no matter how like strong we are or how much joy we're full of, that stuff eats at us. And I think it's really important for me to, to be able to just rest and take time away from that sort of uh, messaging that seems to be coming at us even when we're not trying. Um, I, yeah, I agree. With everything you just said, I would I would say that's where I really look at my ancestors and the history, and really look at the truth, which is there's a time to march and there's a time to dance, and I'm especially when it's its darkest and heaviest, I'm going to dance, which means I'm going to unapologetically occupy the space that they tell me I can't and that I shouldn't because it is my birthright. I don't need anyone's permission. Um, and I also really think it, that's kind of like what, what Bonnie Violet was saying, like in spiritual practice and the spiritual tools of my own recovery, I was taught when I'm in struggle to reach out and to help someone else because then I'm unkinking the hose and I'm seeing that I do have value and purpose and that when I can let the love and the light flow through me to someone else and then tapped more into the source of it all. And I see that whatever pain or humiliation or limitation those voices and that messaging is trying to throw in my way to make me feel hopeless, that it's just an illusion. It's not real. It's not the, it's not the source. And the way I would translate that to my recovery is like whenever that self-judgment or that self-criticism is presenting itself, making me feel like it's hopeless, when I can reach out and help someone else, I realize that that is the true reality. That is the true space of authenticity and that all this other stuff is just man-made. And, um, and I think that's really mm -hmm. why it's so important to step out into, you know, it is a very healing act of self-love to tap into other people's experiences and stories, especially when they don't look like your own, because it's very humbling. And in that humility, I'm able to realize that like, it's all relative and that, and then it, I think it also helps me find a place of radical acceptance, which is that, you know, I, I can radically accept the pain and whatever is going on in the world. Like I'm not in denial or pretending that these people don't exist or have horrible things to say about me or diet culture doesn't exist. And is trying to like, you know, tell me how I should and should not exist in my body. I'm not in denial of any of those things, but those are not what are defining me in those moments and it's the community and the love and the support and the truth that no matter what laws they pass trans kids are still going to exist no matter what laws they pass trans people are still going to exist and you know i kind of live in the hope that more people now more than ever know who we are and love us and celebrate us now more than ever you know and yeah we have a lot of room to grow there's a lot of work to be done and i think um, but that gives me a lot of hope, you know, we're not fighting the same battle that our, our you know, trans siblings of the past were. It's a different ba battle. In a lot of ways, it's a hard battle, but it's not the same. And that kind of gives me hope, too, that we're even having this conversation is proof that things are changing. And I think it's that idea that like trans kids don't exist or like I loved how you said, Kaylee, we're not planting a seed, we're watering a seed. That's what we're doing. Like, mm -hmm. I just think like if I had been, you know, if I am old enough, if I was old enough for you to shame me for not being masculine enough or manly enough or wanting or liking the things at, at three and four and five, you were able to shame me and tell me that I wasn't a boy enough and call me a girl that I'm sure as hell old enough to be exposed to the idea that people like me exist and it's okay. So F that nonsense, that's just ignorance. It is. And 
you know, I just, I go back to, you know, the idea of like how you all, you know, manage this within the community. And that is so much to carry. It's, it's leaning in, it's supporting each other. It's taking mental health breaks. It's dancing, you know, when you sometimes want to scream instead. And I think, you know, it's a lot to carry on your own. And I think as somebody who deeply loves individuals in the trans community and, you know, um, wants to be a support and wants to be an ally, there is a difference between allyship and spectatorship and wondering how, how can we, how can we join you? How can we be an ally um, in this time with you? Do you want to go first, Bonnie Violet? Or do you want me to go? Okay. Sure. Yeah, no, I can. I think, uh, I mean, like, do something, you know, like, we're such a small community. And, you know, in a room of people who don't understand us, who don't know us, they only have heard what people have said about us that is not true most of the time. Like, for somebody more like them to, to talk about us and talk about us in a loving way and caring way is so much more powerful and so much more easier for you to do than for us to do and so I mean I think that's the biggest thing and I think the other thing is to just really like understand and realize that people there are trans people in the world and people can be trans you know I think you know my I've had a really hard time with my parents and I was raised in a way that was not super it was loving, but it was so hurtful. And it wasn't because my parents are horrible people. It was because they didn't know that their child could be smart and like, you know, successful and like all these sorts of things and also could be trans, you know, and that doesn't make them any less of a person or, or didn't like detracts from all the rest of that stuff. And so, you know, and I think, I think sometimes, you know, People, people have kids for a lot of different reasons, you know, and kids happen for a lot of different reasons. And I think, you know, I think as parents, I, I've never been one, but I think it's so important to just let, I've heard um, the Wades talk about like how, you know, my job is to help, is to learn who my kid is mm -hmm. and to help them be the best they can be, you know? And, and, and I think that's the big thing. And I think sometimes, you know, it, I think we've just, our families have been taught differently and grew up in different containers and environments that didn't allow for people like us to exist. My, my, my dad wasn't actively attacking me like, oh, you're trans, I'm gonna make you not trans. He just was trying to make me a, a good man because he knew, he knew what it was like for men in the world who were a little soft or this, that, or the other. And so I don't, you know, I don't think my dad knew what he was doing, but he was just doing what he was taught and what he was told and what he had to do. And, to and could you say like, that was a fear response for you, you know, because I think a lot of times parents are afraid of the world that um, their child mm -hmm. is going into and, and when they don't fit into the containers that we built, it is scary because they, they were adults when we were kids and they saw how violent yeah. the world could be to people who stood out. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, I don't know. And it's interesting because my, I mean, my, and I don't like. And again, this isn't anything, but you know, my dad wishes I was just a gay man right now, you know, and not a trans person. Like he did not love that I was a gay man at first, but he grew to love me and care me and see me and still be willing to talk to me. He won't have anything to do with me since I've transitioned, you know. And so there's something that I don't know. I don't understand that um, keeps people from um, being able to show up for us, like, and to be there with us for, for whatever reason, I don't understand. I mean, the part of me probably has a little bit to understand mm -hmm. because it took me 40 years to get here. And there was a lot of fear and a lot of things that kept me from, you know, um, expanding my self and, residing in my body for once um but it, you know so i understand where it all comes from i just don't know how to get people past that i think yeah i mean thank you for sharing all that bonnie violet and like you know i i mean i kind of think it's not our 
purpose to get people to work past their own issues and ignorance that I'm a, I operate under for me and my own recovery and my own spiritual principles is, you know, we're all victims of the same shame. We're just on a different side of the coin. Like, and so I, when I look at like the ways in which gender has been organized, it's been organized. It's very shaming and punish. Like we try to shame and punish people to fall in line. That is our culture and our society. Shame and we shame men by emasculating them until they rise to the occasion of being masculine, which is to cut out everything that is feminine within them. And we shame women by, you know, like trying to strip them of their power and force them into the roles that are, that, that are not masculine. So I always say that I've learned through my trans experience that femininity and masculinity are a spectrum mm -hmm. that exists within all of us in varying degrees of conversation and dance. And that the shame narrative is that what is feminine is unacceptable for masculine and what is masculine is um unaccessible to femininity and you know the and what society has done is it has you know separated you based on genitalia so to say all of that to say like how can you show up and actively like ally is action you know allyship is in, in is act, what action steps are you taking? What do you have to give? If you have resources to give, give those. You know, we cannot take off our transness. You know, and I think that that's the beauty. That's the thing is like allyship is not convenient. It is inconvenient as hell. You know, and and but it's not always inconvenient. Like there's a lot. You know, but I'm just saying it. It is going to require action. Like, do you have time? Do you have money? Do you have a body? Can you call your legislators? Can you donate time at organizations? Can you show up with your body and counter protest when white supremacists and other people come? And can you educate yourself on the truth of the issues? So when someone in your life that you love, whether it's your mom or your dad or that crazy aunt at Christmas says something that's inaccurate, you can say, I love you. Here's the fact. Here's the research and be relentless in your truth telling the way that we have to be relentless in our truth telling, because it helps us like, like Bonnie Violet said, you know, people listen to who they love and they know. And if there's unfortunately not a trans person that they're aware of in their life, they're not going to listen to us, but they will listen to you at Christmas. They will listen to you at the birthday party. They will listen to you at church, you know? And I, I think that is kind of like, what I always tell people, like, just get into action. Like, are you aware of the facts? Do you know what gender affirming care they're trying to ban? Because if you don't research it, I guarantee you, you'd be shocked to know that gender affirming care for minors is allowing them to wear the clothes they want to wear, respecting the clothes that they want to wear, the haircuts that they want to have, calling them by the name that validates their existence, respecting their pronouns, making sure that they feel safe and supported so that they can learn and become educated and explore the same gifts and talents that they have as anyone else in that school. That is gender. That is the gender affirming care that they're trying to erase. No, no kid can just walk into a doctor's office and say, I'm trans. I want surgeries. I want all of these things. And to take that right away from parents, to disrespect the facts and statistics around mental health, that when you deny children safety, first of all, validation and safety, they are more likely to end their lives. And when you give them that validation mm -hmm. and that safety, it's a shocker. They do this thing that, you know, we want for every child, which is thrive, you know? And so I think like, if you are ignorant on these issues, educate yourself because who knows, you might have a trans kid one day, or your niece and nephew might be trans, or your best friend's child might be trans. And I think that is what is so important about this, this conversation is this is about allowing all children an opportunity to thrive. And I, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I appreciate like all of that feedback. And sometimes it's, it's recognizing the privilege that we have um, as people who fit more in the box um, outwardly to be able to at Christmas, not confront the aunt 
and not confront the person in a business meeting um, when they say things that are problematic. And we have this privilege of assimilating into um, the culture that is um, denying your existence. And that, um, that act of stepping out of there and saying, actually, these, these are the facts and this is what's going on and you're incorrect and I love you and you're incorrect. And I think, you know, it takes loving people to switch perspectives. It takes, I think, the willingness to be seen um, in a way that like uh, threat, it's, it's threatening to the way that they view the world and the way they view you as somebody who fits in the world, you know? And, and regardless of if you are going to have a child who is trans, if you're gonna know someone who's trans, like these, these are human beings who live in this world and they get to be here just like everybody else. And we don't, I've never had to uh, stand up for who I am and my identity. I've never had to fight for that. And in that sense, it feels so completely unfair that not only do you all have to, but, but on a consistent and regular basis at all angles. And so I think the idea of being an ally is standing up when inequity is shown and by shown, it is educating yourself on what is actually happening in order to combat the misinformation that is so freely shared and accepted quickly. Um, I mean, it's so simple to put it in terms that I think a certain side of the conversation would understand. Like, if we are in allies, like say with other countries and an enemy comes in and seeks to overstep or take control or seize control over or cut off resources to someone we're allies with, what would we do? We intervene, we lend aid, we fight on behalf of, we don't just sit there and watch and go, well, that sucks, you know? And I think that's kind of where we've landed as a society is we think allyship is, is um, a very passive state and it's not, it's a very active state. And I think that is why, you know, mm -hmm. there's so much anger right now within our community at how many companies and people utilize us for our identities and utilize us for the work that we put in the world on a creative space, whether that's fashion, art, culture will you know use our or or um and, and put a rainbow and trans flag on things but then when it comes to like actually standing up for our identities it's crickets and so we watch we pay attention um and i think that's why i'm like i just encourage people you know if I were to get into a conversation around trans identity with someone who has their mind made up about trans identity, they're going to assume, obviously, a lot of things about me or someone else who is even looks different than me in the trans experience. Because um, I recognize that as a non-binary person, there's a lot of assumptions that are made about me unless I'm, you know, expressing my femininity. And, um, they're gonna think that like, of course I'm biased and I'm for trans people, you're a trans person. But if somebody is hearing somebody that doesn't look like them, look like me, excuse me, somebody who looks like them, comes from the same church as them, or the same school as them, or the same community as them, that they can recognize themselves in, talk about this stuff, that's, I think, al that is allyship. That is, you know, it is what it is. We live in a society and culture where people want and crave familiarity as a place of comfort and I think really looking like that, that's really what this boils down to is I think a lot of people are not wanting to pull back the lens of what's happening and take a closer look because they've been taught to fear what they don't understand mm -hmm. it's that simple and to not see the agenda they're thinking oh well why would I want my kids to go to a drag show it's like just slow it down for a second first of all no child has ever been able to go into a bar what child and if they are going into a bar like you know 
did you not sneak into a club when you were 16 or 17 or want a fake ID? Like, let's normalize humanity, people. So, but, you know, they can walk into an R-rated movie or they could go to a WWE wrestling match where there's all kinds of, you know, scantily clad everything and violence and aggression. When you are, like, this idea that you're protecting children from something, really? Really? Or the idea that parents don't choose to bring their children to what they want or don't want to watch or see that we're that children are literally being dragged in by the school that's not the truth that's not what's happening and so i think the most powerful thing that you can do as an ally right now is to really educate yourself on what is going on what is being said and what is really happening that's what i would say yeah yeah, I think the big thing is just listening to us when we say we're hurting. Um, we say that these things matter to us because I feel like there's a lot. I think more people are indifferent to us or are more for us than against us, but they don't understand the urgency of what all of this that's happening means to us as a community and as individuals. Um, and so I think because I, I do know that more people are, you know, more people could probably care less, let alone like, like you know, they want to like, yay, or like, you know, but I don't think they realize what a big deal um, this is um, for us as a community. Right. And so I think that's the big thing is to listen to us and show up for us when we say that we're like, we're hurting or that we need this sort of thing. And I think whatever, wherever you're at, just, try to make the space that you're in a welcoming space for trans people. If you're able to hire people, hire a trans person. If you're at a church, work to make your space better for trans people. If you're, you know, like, it doesn't have to be this, like, this, like, I'm going to go into the world and every, you know, like, it could be very simple, um, but really have major impacts on our Smile lives. At us. <laughs> you know, acknowledge our existence. You know, it doesn't have to be, yes, queen, work, slay the house down. I'm just like, hey, how are you? You know, <laughs> you know? like, yeah, I just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I really appreciate, yeah, I know. I, I want to be mindful of the time, like, and I just want to thank everyone for joining, whether you joined live, joined in the middle, coming back later, joining later, like, Thank you for being here and sharing this space with us. Yeah, and I, I really just want to thank the both of you. Um, I want to just recognize how tangible these steps are for every single person. Make whatever space you're filling more loving to the trans community. That's just, that is simple. Um, and I also want to recognize that you really took the time to educate us, and that is not your job. And yet, we still have to do this. We have to learn. We, um, and, and I think that is another, that's another piece of it is, how do we ask? Like, how do we get there? And, and I think it's just being open to these opportunities as they come and, and being thankful to the people in the communities you're trying to learn about um, for taking the time to, to really spell it out for us. And I just deeply, deeply thank you both for, for this time. And Eric, I also would love for you to tell everyone about our support series that is. Yes, if you go to the link in our bio on our, on our stance on gender affirming care on Eating Recovery Center's page and Path Lights page, it is linked directly to a support series that we are launching um, starting April 14th as just a safe space to process any grief or fear or just you know, hardship um, around what's happening in our country, especially the grief part, and to just find community. Um, and and that's, again, our LGBTQ plus support series for, for anyone in the community um, to just process and have a safe space to go. Um, and uh, yeah, that is uh, a free group free support series open to anyone. Thank you so much. Um, and Happy yes. Trans Day of Visibility. <laughs> I'm always like, um, for visibility. Yes. at the end, Elias, so, uh, Bonnie, 
any final thoughts mm -hmm. and Bonnie Violet, thank you so much for being here. Any final thoughts, words? Um, wanna... Something that was coming to mind for people who are maybe looking for a resource as well. I have a podcast with my aunt who is a conservative Christian and her and I are like, she's like the only person in my family who calls me by my name and my pronouns and she's a conservative Christian and we've shared what our relationship has been from being close as young people to then being estranged for 20 years um, because of my gender identity and sexual orientation and her religion. And so um, we talk about how we've kind of worked through that and how we just show up in each other's lives in spiritual ways, physical ways, just in, in all the ways. It's pretty cool. So I think it might be a great resource for folks. It's called Splintered Thank Grace. you for sharing that. And I can imagine that those conversations have been impactful. And, and again, it's, it's looking at a conservative Christian's viewpoint and like honor it, talk through it, and still come together and love each other. Mm -hmm. Like, not where Yeah, yeah. Our goal, our goal is not to change one another, but we know we're going to be changed by being in relationship with one another. Um, and that allows for us each to have our own agency um, and allows us to be who we are within the same I think that's what's so powerful it. about it all. Not, and Because first of all, please follow Bonnie Violet. I know they're going to be tagged in this, but like they're so, that's just one of the many resources that you offer people in conversation and community. So don't sell, like, sell all of it, girl. I'm going to sell it for you. Um, but also, I think, yeah, like, I love that. I, I love the truth that I have discovered, too, is that disagreements on ideologies and things does not take away from the common humanity that we share. I think that's kind of, people say, like, oh, we've lost discourse. I don't think we've ever had discourse. I think we're finding discourse because of this, which is mm. that we can disagree on things and still love and realize that it has, what I do with my life does not affect yours. Mm. Like, what, what a thought, <laughs> what mm. a concept that like, you're still gonna go to the grocery store. You're still gonna like, I don't know, poop and pee like a normal, <laughs> like all these other things that we have in common as human beings. And I can wish you health and wellness and love and connection and not agree with you on things. What a thought. So thank you. Yeah. Yes, and still be friends. Well, again, I just want to thank you both so much for being here. We will tag everything in the copy of this live. It will be saved um, and just continue to do the good work that you're doing, raising awareness and visibility for the trans community. And I thank you both so much. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.